Welcome back to part three of this series on genetic algorithms. Right, so we're going to open up our brain code now. So grab that. The script already exists because it's actually moving Zombunny forward. And you can see that just here. Okay, so it's pretty much empty, but let's start constructing things in here. So at the top, we're going to create a public for our DNA. So it'll be a DNA like that and then we want also a public for game object eyes now the eyes are where we're allowing zombie to see from and the point that we can then detect if something is in front of zombie so let's just save this at this point we're going to go back into unity now you want to find that particular prefab of zombie which is in the ga folder this one here then come over into the inspector we're going to open that up and once inside of here you can see that Zombunny has this eyes component and if you have a look at that you can see that's pretty much just a cube that I've put in the front which we're going to be able to do a raycast from to project where the eyes are in this particular case so Select Zombunny, the prefab, which is actually called Zombunny 1. Then find where your brain is, which is down here. And that's where you want to grab the eyes and drag and drop it into this eyes section of the brain so that it can actually use it for looking forward. Okay, so once you've done that, we can actually close up our prefab and go back to our scene. And let's open up our code again. All right, so let's continue with this. We're going to create a bool called C wall. And this is the bool that will be the key to our dictionary. Then after that, we're actually going to create a public eggs found. And we'll set that initially to zero. And then a layer mask. Then we're going to create a public float eggs found equals zero and then a layer mask and we will call that ignore equals six now remember back in the first video when i said that the layer you created for bunny went into position six well that's where it's being set here if your layer for bunny is not six you need to put whatever the number is in there now just to remind you if we go back into our Zombunny prefab and come over into the inspector. There's the layers where you've added them in. You can see that my bunny is six. Now, if yours is something else, this is where in the code you need to change it because what we want to do is make sure that we don't do any ray casts and hit other bunnies because we're not really interested if there's under other bunnies in front of us. We're only really quite interested if there is a wall. So let's now come back into our brain code and just make sure you've got the right value there and then we're going to create a bool can move and we're going to set that initially to false so if there is a wall in front of zombunny then we don't actually want to perform this translate down here otherwise you're just going to be constantly pushing the bunny forward into the wall which could end up actually in unity pushing the bunny through the wall because that can happen when you're using translates um, in this case so we're just going to put this in there to make sure that we don't add, add any extra sort of functionality with that we don't want okay so we've got those values let's put in a public void in it so we can initialize our zombie bunny when we create him so dna equals new dna and then that's all we need to do for initializing right so we've got this eggs found now genetic algorithms besides having the gene sequence if you remember back to the first video we have to evaluate how fit each agent is and then pick the fittest ones and breed those together okay so only the best get bred together in this case, our evaluation of the bunnies will be how many eggs they found in the environment. So that's why we're going to keep a count of them here. Now, we're going to count those eggs when the bunny moves over the top of them. If you have a look 
on those eggs. If we come back into here on the prefab, you'll see that it has a capsule collider on it and it's set to is trigger. Okay, so this is what we're looking for now in our script that we've actually triggered that. So back in our brain, we're going to create a void on trigger enter collider col and then inside of here if col.game object dot compare tag is an egg then we'll go eggs found plus plus and we will destroy the egg so actually just remove it so col dot game object dot set active now i'm not actually going to destroy that egg i'm just going to set it active to false so that it's still there for the next round of bunnies to come through and this is actually turned on a little bit later when we create a new population of rabbits okay so we've got that now in the update is how we're going to update our brain okay so we're going to set seawall to equal false initially then we're going to go can move equals true raycast hit call it hit now at this same time we're going to draw it so you can actually see it as a red line in the scene so debug dot draw ray and we'll draw a ray from the eyes dot transform dot position in the forward direction so eyes dot transform dot forward and we'll multiply that by how far we want to look ahead now in this case we're only inside a small maze each of those boxes is like one meter by one meter so i'm just going to multiply this by one and only look ahead as far as like the next space this you can make bigger if you want to look further ahead but in this case we don't need to However, I'm just leaving it in there to remind you that you can make that bigger if you like. Okay, so the color of this will be red so that we can see that. Now let's actually perform our raycast hit. So if physics.spherecast, and I'm sending out a sphere cast instead of just a simple line because I want a little bit of a volume in this cast that we're projecting out. With a single ray, it's very, very, very precise. So we need to sort of look a little broader in front of Zombunny. So we want to do this for eyes.transform.position. We're going to send it out to 0.1f. This is the size or the radius of that sphere cast. It's only small, but it's it's bigger than like a single point. And then we want eyes.transform.forward. That is the direction we're doing it. We want out hit as our result. We're going to send it out for 1f. Okay, so that's this value and this value are the same ones. Okay, if you change this or this you want to make sure that those two things are aligned and then we're going to make sure that we put not ignore so that's that layer mask we want to make sure that we actually are ignoring it essentially and so we put a not in there to um, make sure that your ray cast will not include that layer okay so now inside of here we're going to say if hit dot collider dot game object dot compare tag is our wall then forward or c wall i should say c wall equals true so we can see a wall in front of us and then can move will equal false to make sure that that doesn't keep trying to push through there right so we've now got that and we can use it down in our fixed update to actually move Zombunny and turn Zombunny around. So down in here, we're going to go this dot transform dot rotate, and we're going to rotate around the y axis by DNA dot genes, and we pass through seawall. Okay, now that's going to tell us what angle we should be turning because it's we've set it up initially. It's going to be random then if can move then we will actually just push zombunny in a forward direction a little bit at a time okay so that's the brain code save that 
And to see this running, we first need to make sure that initialize gets run to set the random DNA. So we're going to come into the population manager and I want you to come down a little bit into the code where we're creating each of our agents. And you can see here, I've actually called them bots instead of agents, same kind of thing. Okay, so for the bot when it's created, before we do the adding to our population, we'll just go b.get component and we'll get the brain and we'll call that in it so that Zombunny or all the Zombunnies that get created are going to have random angles for going forward. And um, let's have a look at what we get. So save that. Let's go over in to Unity and we will press play. And now when the Zombunnies get created, you can see what you're getting in the corner. OK, they're being pushed forward. And some of them are just lucky enough that they're going off and collecting stuff just by pure coincidence. This guy, look at him. He's already seemed to be trained really well um, in his movements just by sheer chance of the angles that were set. So you can see some of them here already moving around. So these would be the types of individuals who are going to be the most fittest for the next generation. But we don't have that functionality programmed in yet. And that's what we will do when we come back in the next video. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website, holistic3d.com. Look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.